So I will probably be uh, combining a couple weeks at a time now, just because there's just a lot of repetitive stuff um, and a lot of footage. So uh, here I am just uh, going back over the, the coming up to the mounting block. This is just a big part of how I like to start them, <clears throat> really get them comfortable with me being up there um, and letting them kind of crave this um, me being up there and coming up to the mounting block. Uh, I do a lot of this getting down, walking away, asking him to come back. Just kind of helping him feel really, really good about me um, being up there and getting on and off of him a lot. Um, I show this uh, quite a bit just because I, I do it quite a bit. Um, and you can see he's getting more and more relaxed about me touching him all over, touching him while I'm up on top of him. I really want to make sure that he's super comfortable. Um, I'm going to put my weight on him a little bit. And you can see he's like, oh, I'm not sure I like that. Um, but he helped, he kept it together and he stayed, um, which is what I want. And then being able to touch him all over. Um, he's not, he's really relaxed, but he's not like 100% relaxed. And so that's why I, I kept doing it over and over again. And then from both sides, super important too. So this is just a lot of repetitive stuff. And then here I have him up there and I'm getting him used to me swinging because, you know, what if I get on and I accidentally, you know, hit him in the butt with my foot? I don't want him freaking out. Um, and he really kind of grabs his butt a lot. Um, doesn't like things touching it. So I did a lot of that. I'm just putting my leg up there, putting my weight on with my leg, um, rubbing, rubbing his butt with my foot. Um, and just doing that over and over and over again. Uh, and then just trying to ask him to stay there, but not force him to stay there. Um, so we had a lot more choice in the matter. And then here, just to do on the other side, I had to keep getting down and reminding him that, yeah, I can stand on that side. He's, he's more uncomfortable with me getting up on that side. And you can see, he's like, oh, I don't think I want you over there. I like you better on the other side. And so I just ask him to go back on over um, and, and to stand there. So before I'm going to ask him from above, I'm going to ask him on the ground and make sure that he can still, uh, come over there from, from the ground. And so I'm going to try to do it from above and he didn't really kind of get it. Um, then I'd step down and, and remind him what it means and then ask him again from above and just doing that over and over again until he, he kind of clicked in his head that, oh, this is what she wants. Okay. I'm super grateful for the lights um, because it sure helps me be able to work at night when I'm working crazy hours. And you can see he looks a little tender footed here. Uh, he has shoes on now because uh, I was really wearing his feet down, working him so much. Uh, and this I really like. So I, I, I like them to be super responsive on my aids as far as asking for walk truck counter on the ground. So then when I'm under saddle, it transitions really well. Uh, and you can see he, he responds and, and canters off uh, right when I ask him, and I really like that. And then I did a lot of this kind of flagging while in motion stuff, um, having the flag come up behind him, touching him in his his special spots <laughs> when, when he was moving. He has this, like, um, my son calls him his wrong spots. So his wrong spots where he's like, oh, no, that's my special place. You can't touch me there. Um, and it's, this is flank area in his, in his hind end. So I did a lot of that while he was moving. This is such a good technique. You should be able to flex him, um, you know, towards you. But then also like if you were in the saddle and so I'm asking him to flex kind of away from me there. And, uh, this is a great thing that they should definitely be able to know how to do before you get on. And he did great with it. Um, he, he is pretty soft, which I like. And then I just did tons and tons and tons of ground driving. Um, I had stopped doing this for a while in my training, and, and I'm not really sure why. Um, and this horse just has kind of made me have to do a lot more of it. Um, and uh, I was talking with my friend Nate Eicher, and I was like, hey, I'm kind of stuck. What should I do? And, and, and he was like, oh, yeah, just do more ground driving. Ground driving is so awesome.
So this is typical Isidro fashion where uh, we don't have a lot of video. Uh, this is all that I have. It's just this one day he decided to take video. Uh, you could see in the picture that Huracan got a bath and uh, he's a fancy show horse now with his cooler on. Um, and I, I showed this whole part of Isidro, um, you know, getting him tacked up and kind of like what he does before he gets on. Like he's ridden this horse quite a bit, but he still goes through this whole kind of um, regimen before he gets on. You see, kind of touches him all over. Okay, we're still good. Making sure that, you know, this horse is still okay with, with all these things, not just assuming that he could hop up there. Um, and he flexes him and then um, he's, you see how he paused when he went up? He's like, yep, he's still good. Okay, so he's just really reading his horse, uh, which is so important, I think, is uh, don't just assume that because you rode him yesterday and they were fine, that they're going to be fine again. And then he makes sure that he can flex him. And he'll kind of ask him both ways. He's not going to spend a lot of time in doing that. Just checking to make sure that still works. And um, the horse still understands that uh, he can turn his head without having to move his feet. And he just walks on off. Um, super cute. So this I just had to cut a lot out uh, because, I mean, he's, he's going, um, you know, where you can't see him. And uh, what he's working on here is is his stop um, and changing direction. So he's going to stop and rest him there. Uh, I believe the horse didn't really want to go on that end of the of the bull, bull pen, so he would go and rest over there a lot, um, which was really really good. So here I just cut out so you can just see more of the horse and less of long periods where there's no horse. Uh, and he's just, I love how nice and loose rein, and he's just walking forward and relaxed. He looks like he's an old broke saddle horse instead of a super green Mustang. He just slowly starts reminding him, okay, remember you can follow this rein, you can change direction. He's just teaching him to follow that, you know, to follow that rein. Same thing, just, uh, he must have not been wanting to go over there because uh, in a lot of this video as I'm watching it, he's he's having him rest facing that wall quite a bit. So for whatever reason, Isidro thought that that was uh, a place that he wanted him to rest. Almost seems like that video like just like repeated itself. That was weird. Uh, so what he's doing here is um, he's teaching him to whoa. So he says whoa, and he kind of sits back. And if the horse doesn't stop, then he changes direction and goes the other way. Um, and he's just going to practice that a lot because he wants to make sure that that his horse understands whoa really really well. Uh, this is uh, you'll see a different technique that uh, Wileen. Our friend Wileen demonstrates um, in our next video, um, which is really, really cool. But this is how Sidero teaches it. Uh, he wants to make sure that his horse knows how to woe uh, before he takes him out of this bullpen because he hasn't really been out of the bullpen yet. He's just been working here. Uh, he hasn't worked out in our open round pen or in our open arena yet. So you'll see, he'll say, whoa, he'll sit back, he'll put his feet forward. And then if the horse says it, whoa, he changes direction. Uh, so the horse will start to anticipate that, oh, I need to sit on my hot, and you can see he did there. So instead of instead of hauling on his face, he's just going to change direction, um, and that worked out really, really well. So we're back to Grenya. Um, just the video kind of worked out that way, uh, where I just kind of snuck Orkan in there, uh, and here I'm doing more ground driving. <laughs> I did this every single day. I just really wanted to make sure that I had a decent handle on him because um, he would still, like that rope would touch his flank or touch his haunch and he would just grab his butt and jump forward or leap straight up in the air. 
Uh, and so there's really only one way to fix that, and it's just to keep doing it over and over and over again, and then putting pressure on him when he doesn't, or he, he reacts that way, um, you know, asking him to stop. And then here I'm working on my back because I really want my back to be much better because it was like non-existent under saddle. Uh, so I'm going to try to fix that here. And he's he's backing, but he's not soft in the face. And I, and I don't really like that. So we had to work on that quite a bit more. And then I did a lot of this too, um, just making sure that he'll flex both ways. He just has a side pull on right now. And... Um, and then I will get on and off, get on and off, over and over and over again, uh, teaching him just to stand there and be okay. Uh, it, like, it just did him, you know, you know, really, really a lot of good to to have me do that over and over and over again. Um, and kind of excited for the next video because things really start to progress in the next video when we took him to Vegas and our friend Wileen Wilson um, Davis went and and did a fantastic demo with him um and all this prep work really kind of helped make that demo happen and then we just were ready to move on from there but see i just don't like how he he feels the need to move so much so i just i did a lot of this up and down up and down up and down and i can't get on very well from the off side um my <laughs> my right leg does not want to lift me and so um, so I would just stand up and down, up and down with my other leg um, on the off side. And then we're doing more of here. I just went up on the rail uh, so that I could hang on to it when I put my leg over him um, in case he wanted to jump forward. Um, and then just more work of making noise up there, being on top of him and him being okay with that. And, and he seems to really like this this exercise, this activity. And it is a big part of how I get a horse started under saddle. I do a lot of this stuff. Um, you see the Citro and my styles are very different. And a lot of that has to do with, um, he has a lot more physical ability than I do to stay with a horse that gets squirrely or acts crazy. that inspired you all a little bit because it sure is a great saying that uh, when we fall in the trap of saying I have to I uh, know we we get to uh, we are so privileged especially those of us that get to have these horses in our lives so here I am uh, with Grenya uh, in the big arena and uh, Martin is in there working a reigning horse so this was great exposure for him um, we're working on uh, part of a class that we're going to have to be able to do, and that's um, the handling and conditioning, conditioning class, which requires trotting in hand. So uh, I got my workout by um, teaching him to trot in hand by jogging with him all around that massive arena. And then I wanted to reinforce something that he already knows to help him kind of feel good about himself um, and get up on that rail and, and mess with him here while he's got all those distractions going on. And then I'm, I'm up there and I'm putting my leg over so he can see my leg on the other side and his other eye. And I'm really pleased with how he kept his like focus. Like he was distracted. There's horses working and stuff in that arena. 
and stuff going on up top on the barn and he he still listened and he still paid attention to me and he um didn't act crazy when i was trotting him in hand he kind of goofed off quite a bit <laughs> but um he he was really awesome here because uh, he knows uh the answer here uh and he gets a lot of confidence um doing things over and over again that he knows really well uh and he i find this works well with this horse um, to help him to feel better about himself and working with me and just all of it. And then this was super cool. I was able to ask him to lay down out in this big arena with somebody and they're riding and not just riding, but like riding a reining horse. And he laid down and he rolled. Um, and it was so cool to know that he was that relaxed there and that relaxed with me um, to just be able to kind of release and do that. And then of course... <laughs> rolls on top of me he's very talented this horse can roll over and over and over all the way to the other side a bunch of times it's such a beautiful day that day and here i am having fun like all these things I'll, i'm putting these little clips of these videos in here because all these things are so important um you gotta develop a really good relationship with this horse that you're going to go ask to do some crazy stuff in a hundred days and um anything i could do to help him feel better about being with me about just being domesticated um and boy did i find some itchy spots and he's so goofy his little face at his lip and he's just like so funny his personality is really coming out and he's kind of playful um and I was having a lot of fun just um, giving him a good scratch because for a while he wouldn't do anything like this. He was so guarded um, and not relaxed enough. And this is telling me that I've got a horse that's relaxed enough to, to kind of let his guard down and let me know how he's really feeling. And um, he, he really enjoyed his scratch. So here I am starting to really introduce, uh, he's a little hard to bridle. Um, he kind of turns his head away and, and it's mostly, I, I mean, I feel like it's because he's really not comfortable being ridden or having me up there yet. So this is a precursor to that. And so I'm using uh, my clicker and a treat to um, put that up and then have him not move his head away. And then eventually, um, he can put his head down and even just for me to put it over his ears like that was is like huge like he would fling his head away so that's that's a big change and i just love that excel eq shine on him he's so pretty so uh, here i am doing more ground driving and i attached i started attaching like all kinds of stuff to the saddle while i did it um to see if i could stimulate or not stimulate but like simulate him getting goosey with things touching his butt and then try to work through it and um the, and i show that here because i i i really don't like those horse training videos or horse progress videos it doesn't show like when it goes wrong and i mean it goes wrong I and mean, you can see like i'm like okay but i was able to kind of shut him down and stop him and i changed direction and um, i worked a lot on that until he just got much more relaxed with it and he's not 100 percent. this is going to be an ongoing thing we're going to have to revisit often and then it was time to get his teeth done. Finally, he got his teeth done. He had some really sharp edges. Um, his teeth were uneven, which had his jaw pretty locked up and tight. Um, the chiropractor found that. Uh, so it was kind of cool to um, have this awesome equine dentist come and fix his teeth. They had a lot of stuff to work on in there. He had some caps that didn't come off and a lot of unevenness and ridges and sharp points. Uh, he's actually put on a ton of weight just since having his teeth done. And he was a total lightweight. Like, I love it when they look all gorked out. He was such a lightweight. Like, usually, like, like a lot of times, Mustangs have to get, like, extra anesthesia because they just burn through it because they're so nervous. Well, not Grenya. Uh, he required one dose, and he was gorked out. So he's, like, evening his teeth up so he his bite and his chew is much more even. And Grenya's jaw is so much looser, more relaxed now. It's amazing how um, how big of a change it can be from fixing their teeth. Oops. Come on. Come on, Dopey. You can do it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, come on. Come on. 
come on, come on, come on. Let's get a running start. There we go. Come on, come, come hang out in here. Come on. So this was kind of a funny video. I ended up putting this on Facebook. Um, I'm trying to get him at liberty to side pass up to the mounting block, which he should know how to do. But for some reason in his head, he thought I want him to back up to me. And he's just so darn cute doing it. Like the look on his face, like he's like, oh, I did it. All right, that's what you wanted. And I just, I didn't have the heart to correct him. Um, he's such a goofball. Uh, and here we actually got out into the big arena and I ground drove him all around the, well, it's not that big arena, but it's the covered arena uh, outside of the round pen. Um, and I'm just, you know, checking on stuff we can back. Um, I did, I think, just walk and trot out here. And I'm super happy with how focused on me he stayed. Uh, that's huge, like, like huge, uh, that even with everything going on, He's not winning at other horses. He's not, because there's horses going around doing all kinds of stuff. He's really paying attention to me and he's allowing me to be back there behind him, which was like a big, like no go, no fly zone for like a long time. And so I'm, I'm just pleased as punch, uh, how great he did. Uh, I feel comfortable. Uh, I could probably ground drive him anywhere because um, he, he stayed so focused on me. So I'm really happy with that. This is all good stuff, good stuff. Um, I think that, that horses could definitely use a lot more of this. And I'm glad that that my friend, um, Nate, he reminded me that, that we, we really should be doing more of this. Um, and I used to even ground drive, and I probably should do it with him, uh, with, with like poles attached to the saddle and everything, just simulate a cart. And here um, I just do a lot of the same stuff where he's loose in the round pen but i'm i'm getting control of his walk trot and canter on cue when i ask him and to hold and maintain that lope and it's translated under saddle really really well and uh, that's what i like um, and so here whenever i use any kind of tool it's so important to uh, desensitize with the tool afterward so they don't get like you know afraid of it or anything and here he is acting like a goofball um, anytime I can kind of get him turned out, especially when it was like windy, um, and he was feeling fresh, I try, but <laughs> it's so funny as he would stop running. If he saw me spying on him, he was like, Oh, what do you want? And he would stop running around acting like a goofball. So that was hard to video. And that's just too funny. He's just like spooked over there. And then he does some weird like spook here. Like he wanted to go over there and check them out, but he wasn't sure. And then I'm like, is he stretching? I think that was a spook. I don't know. So here I'm experimenting because um, I just can't. I'm so getting frustrated at this point with uh, him still being so goosey with anything touching his butt. So I'm like, okay. And I wouldn't normally recommend doing this, but he ties really well. He knows what the clicker is. And he knows how to side pass up to the rail. So I used all three of those things to do what's called counter conditioning. So I would rub that. He would get tense. And the minute he would kind of let his breath out or relax, I'd click and treat. And I just did that over and over and over again. And I kept him tied so that in case he did bolt off, he didn't get away because I didn't want to reinforce that behavior. And there's no way I would recommend doing this other than this horse has already had so much work and so much training. Uh, this was kind of like a last resort for me. And so um, the same thing here, I did it on the other side and you can see it gets really nervous about it. And then I wait till it kind of releases and relaxes. And the, the treating is so awesome because it makes them chew and it, it's a really good indicator. I could say, okay, if he's still chewing his treat, then um, he's not freezing. Uh, so it, it really helps me gauge how he's responding to stuff. And there he kind of moved away, but he, he held it together. And I just did a ton of this, uh, this counter conditioning. Um, and he's a lot better with his butt now. Um, so it was me just experimenting and um, it seemed to work.